Hey, Black Hat here. Path of Exile streamer, dungeon crawler, RPG player, etc. I stream on Twitch and play games on YouTube. Here we have a build review today for the Pyroclasm build. It is my Pyroclast Saboteur Mine build. So for those who aren't familiar, Pyroclast Mines is a skill where you throw a mine that deals damage in an area when detonated and it launches four projectiles that rain down each exploding to deal damage in a smaller area. We specifically for this build will be using the power class Mine of Sabotage. In the background you'll be seeing some gameplay of it from our tester version of the build. The old build's a bit out of date so it'll look a bit different but the new one will definitely be better. So let's go over the items really quickly. This build is broken down into a, the basic, the advanced, and the uber gear tiers. We'll look at the basic gear first. For our weapons, we're using the Heartbreaker and the Cerberus Limb. You can use one of each. You can use two of one of them. It's up to you. They're just basic weapons to start you out with. Uh, Heartbreaker is a little bit more defensive. Cerberus Limb has a bit more power to it. The basic version of the build will be using Shroud of the Lightless for its defensive abilities, as well as a bit of offense through the Hypnotic Eye Jewel. We'll be using Dodre's Tenure here for additional spell damage. And we'll be using Marlene's Fallacy for a bunch of extra critical hit damage as well as Culling Strike. Mix it in, we'll just have a bunch of basic rare gears to add to the damage and so on. We also have a Pure Talent socketed to give us an extra bit of critical strike chance. When you upgrade to the advanced version of this build, you'll be training your weapons for Doriani's Catalyst which have a bit more of a kick to them. They require level 75 though, so you can use a little bit of something before that point so you can keep leveling and get some currency built up. For the advanced version, we will have a, a Victarius Influence instead of a Shroud of the Lightless. This is better for mana reservation and the plus one to aura gems is really good for power class mines, as they are one of the mine gems that is technically an aura gem as well. For our helmet, we will have upgraded it so that it has Searing Exarch and Eater of World Implicits for damage. Our gloves, we've upgraded now to just standard rare gloves. These ones will be having Eater and Searing Exarch Implicits as well. Next will be our boots. Also, more Eldritch Implicits. We've kept the Marlene's Fallacy and added Heart of Flame to it. Originally, we had a cheaper anointment. Heart of Flame, it requires like gold oil, so it's a little bit more expensive, but it will be worth it as it is a nice damage increase. We have Polaric Devastation, replacing one of our rare rings. The elemental resistances that were on that ring and the stats will now be moved to the glove slot in this version. The Polaric Devastation will add Covered in Ash, which is an extremely powerful debuff to enemies, decreasing their movement speed as well as making them take more damage. This has to be in the left ring slot, though, or it will not work. We've advanced our Amethyst Ring with some Life Catalysts and some minus mana to non channeling skills. And we just have a basic belt to go with it. The basic version of the build sits currently around 5 million DPS. This can be achieved for about 100z. That is a rough estimate based on what I have seen in past leagues. I am not infallible though, so your experiences may vary. The advanced gear brings you up 2.5 million DPS more to 7.4 million. And then we move up to the uber gear tier. This one, as you might notice, is a big jump, seeing as it goes up an extra 10 million DPS. Well, there's a good reason for that. Because advancing from the basic tier to the advanced tier is about 2 to 3 diff. But advancing from the advanced tier to the uber gear tier is going to be closer to 20 diff. This is when you really, really want that extra damage these, these endgame chase items are going to have. The special upgraded uber items, as I'll call them, are listed in green just to differentiate them. We have Divinarius here, which has a real kick to it, as well as it gives us a little bit of extra AoE and a little bit of extra life and mana on kill, which just helps us map better. The Divinariuses are about five div apiece, usually. The Victoria's influence here with the trap and mine gems, as well as the plus aura gems on it. I have seen them as low as 7 div, I've seen them as high as 14 div. 
the trap and mine gems as well as the aura gems corruption tends to be a decent pick you can also go for trap and mine and aoe it is slightly less powerful but it is still a good pick i do find though that putting the trap and mine as well as the aura ones together tends to be cheaper than aura and aoe which also works or trap and mine and aoe just generally this combination works with less skills so it's more likely to be cheaper but whichever of those three corruptions you want to get two of between trap and mine or, or aoe it all works a marlene's fallacy has gotten a corruption now it now has the grace aura effect implicit to give us some extra health that's very important there is two catalysts on here and not 20 for a very specific reason because with two catalysts it increases your damage slightly not required but it increases it slightly if you add 3% or more, it decreases your damage by increasing the less critical strike multiplier. Therefore, you do not want to increase it above 2. Our Polaric Devastation has stayed the same, and the same with our other rings. All of the information that you need is here in the notes section. I have a setup guide for basic, advanced, and uber sets, as well as their rough pricing, as well as the information of what I have learned on how to best map with this and how to best boss with this. The advice may might seem obvious to you potentially, but to some people it's not. Finally, we will be looking at the skill tree. We had immediately up the elemental damage to trickery, blood siphon, and assassination. Grab saboteur. We grab a few other points along the way, grabbing successive detonations for damage, and the mines cannot be damaged mastery. This is the most important and the primary mastery that you need in this build no matter what. I find that it is otherwise just kind of painful to use it without that. We have Snow Forged up here, the mastery you can ignore till you're on the advanced version of the build. Grabbing Written Blood and Influence with the Reservation Mastery to increase your maximum elemental resistances. This is also not required till the advanced version. One of the most important things is the efficient explosives up here with mine reservation efficiency and chance to detonate an additional time. Plus there has the aura effect of mines, which is just like a straight up damage increase. Heading down here, we have the basic mine wheel giving a lot of damage. We have ghost shrouds because we have almost 25,000 evasion rating. So you will be gaining an average of 750 energy shields every time you lose a Ghost Shroud, which is double the energy shield maximum we currently have, so if you get bonus energy shield on stuff, that is only good. We have the Mind Drinker node, so we can get the Mana Res Reservation Mastery. We've picked up Infused and Frenetic, as well as Fervor down here. Those are to go with our Charged Mines support, which just feeds us Power Charges and Frenzy Charges at astonishing rate. Also be picking up some Health Pools, with extra health masteries. We have Charisma here to add more mana reservation efficiency, seeing as we will be having mines as well as six other auras. We have Ballistics here for damage, as well as mainly Dexterity, plus some health. More health up here, as well as Evasion rating from your armor. We have Wind Dancer here, as it tends to give a very large bonus if you get hit to protect you, and I find that is amazing. It goes up to 10% in your evade chance, which is already sitting at 80, which is pretty freaking good. We have our spell suppression here. This entire setup right here is enough to give us 63% of our spell suppression. Plus we get a little bit more from our evasion mastery here. This evasion mastery is not going to be useful until you are in the advanced version of the build as Dodre's tenure for gloves does not offer you any evasion rating. Finally, we'll be looking at the saboteur ascendancy. The primary thing that you're going to be going for first is the Demolition Specialist. Besides the fact that hindering things nearby is very useful, uh, effective auras from mines is very, very powerful and will be give you your the lion's share of your damage boost. But it will be your first Ascendancy to take. The second Ascendancy point that we'll be going for is Pyromaniac. The up to 10% life regen per second which you will get from throwing even a single set of mines, is extremely powerful and should never be ignored. The immunity to Ignite and Shock is also a really nice layer at higher levels, 
It doesn't matter as much during the campaign, but it will be a big deal for you eventually. Warden Shadows is a nice defense layer that you'll be having. It helps you a whole lot from the start of the end game onwards, and it will be a very important part with making sure that you can take down the fourth Azaro. It tends to give you a lot of protection, and seeing as he is a melee build that does melee attacks, the blind is going to be a big deal. And finally, we'll take Explosive Experts for damage. Finally, we have our Gem Links. In our first weapon, or second weapon, doesn't really matter, they are interchangeable, we will be having our Flame Dash and Palmability with Inspiration. Palmability will be picked over Elemental Weakness, as it's nice to have a little bit of extra damage, and the Ignite Chance is important for proccing some stuff we have in the build. Flame Dash is going to be picked over Dash, as it goes a little bit farther than Dash, and it tends to cool down better. And for our second weapon, we have our buff. We have our Vol Righteous Fire here. We're currently on the Uber build at 15.5 million. With We Turn It On, we get to 18.5 million. Pretty good. And we also have the phase run on Casman Stunned, just as a quick way to get away from stuff. Uh, we also have an automated section. I have chosen not to put phase run in the automation because it will eat through our frenzy charges too quickly otherwise. This way it will only pick our frenzy charges off when it needs them. Speaking of automation, we're going to jump ahead to this. So at this current point of making the video, the automation gem is not actually in path of building yet. So until it's in here, I have left trauma here just as a uh, placeholder for it. So just pretend this is automation. We have our steel skin, which will be going off every three seconds-ish, and it will have increased duration on it so that it lasts longer. We also have detonate mines here. So this was a decision I made to save passive points. If you decide at some other point that you want to have a gem socket, but a passive point doesn't matter as much, you can take out the detonate mines gem and in the Devastating Devices, Volatile Mines, etc. cluster, you can add the Detonate Mines is triggered when you are moving, which is the new Mine Mastery added this leak. Back to our skills, we have our Auras. We have Summon Skitter Bots here for shielding and shocking things to proc Explosives Specialist, and we also have the bonuses to Trap and Mine Damage, as well as the chance to detonate your mines again. And we have Volgrace here for the Volgrace effect, as well as the ability to boost our evade chance, which is kind of nice at 80%. I would like it to be higher if possible, but our flasks can do that ourselves. If we swap on our flasks, for example, our Jade Flask, which is effective when we take a Savage hit, so when you take 10% or more damage to your life from a single hit, it brings us up to 86%. And we also have the... Wind Dancer here, so if you've taken attack recently, that also brings it up to 88%. Between the two of them, it can bring you all the way up to 95% if they happen to somehow trigger both at the same time. That is unlikely, but still. Back to our auras, we have a secondary set that are life-based specifically. We have a level 1 precision, which is mainly here so that we can have something reserving life to proc our reservation mastery here, which gives us extra maximum elemental resistances when you reserve life and mana. We also have Clarity here, saying as it is a nice bonus to have a bit of extra mana regeneration. I brought it up to level 5 so that we continue to have enough to very easily maintain any of the mana that we need. Then we just have our Portal Gem, which may or may not be required, seeing as there is now a button in this league where you can activate a Portal Scroll from your inventory. So, having a portal gem might not even be needed anymore. Last but not least, the Pyroclast Mines of Sabotage. Of these different gems, we have two at level 21, for an important purpose. We have no Awakened Gems in here, surprisingly, but there aren't any Awakened Gems that manage to outdamage the other gems that we have here, which is surprising, but true. It happens sometimes with mine builds, I find. We have uh, level 21 Pirate Class Mines of Sabotage. That is specifically because even a single level up is enough to increase the added damage by a large quantity. And we have Minefield at level 21, 
The level 21 here is only important if you do not have the Victario's influence going with uh, the plus to mine damage. That is enough that you can use a level 20 gem just fine. If you do not have the plus two, as I imagine most people will not for a very long time, if ever, it is better to have a level 21 version of this as it is a large damage increase. The other four skills here do not benefit a huge amount from having level 21, so I have not put it there. It won't hurt them to be level 21, but I don't want to list it unless it's going to be a notable difference. We have Charged Minds here to give us as many Frenzy Charges and Power Charges as we could ever possibly need. We'll always have them, they're great. Increased Critical Strike Chance to buff our already high 55% Crit Strike Chance without our Diamond Flask on. We have our Trap and Mine Damage, which unfortunately decreases our throwing speed, but increases our damage a lot. And we have Inspiration Support, which reduces our mana costs a lot as well. This is more important if you do not have the advanced version with the non-channeling skills have minus to total mana cost. This does kind of trivialize the need for Inspiration, but in general, Inspiration does have a very nice effect with the Inspiration charges increasing elemental damage and critical strike chance. So in general, this is generally a pretty good gem. Generally. And that is the whole build. I am really excited to try this, and I will be building this for Necropolis. If this build uh, continues to be useful in coming leagues, I will update the title and the description to match so that you know that it has been updated for the next league. While this is built for Necropolis, there is no reason to believe that it necessarily will break for next league, and if I do the proper updates, I am sure that it will be fine. In any case, thank you all for watching so much. If you enjoy watching highlights and build content, please subscribe to our Black Hat Studio channel. If you want to see our streams, you can follow us on Twitch at Black Hat Studio or watch our stream VODs on YouTube at Black Hat Streams. And I will see you soon. Meow.